All right, if you are a new agency owner, I'm gonna walk you through a exercise. And by doing this exercise, you're gonna understand exactly what you need to do to achieve your goal, whether it's $10,000 a month, $5,000 a month, $20,000 a month. Today, I'm gonna to give you so much clarity and, and so much ease of understanding of exactly what is required of you day in, day out, that you basically cannot fail. Once you define this, it just becomes about doing it every single day. And I'm hoping that by the end of this video, you have just a real clear, simple, plan you don't people overcomplicate business uh, at the end of the day a business is a system right the output of the system is cash the input of the system is lead flow typically okay and so in this video I'm going to walk you through exactly the, the reverse engineering uh, exercise that I use to determine how much input I need to put into a business to receive the amount of money I want to make so let's get into my screen um, by the way my name is Charlie Morgan I'm built and scale two businesses agencies to 10 figures coaching business to near enough eight figures now and um, yeah, I make these videos to help people. Lol, let's get into it. All right, so reverse engineering or inversion is a mental model used to solve problems. Whether you like it or not, the goal you have is a problem you have to solve. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So let's figure out exactly how to achieve your goal through reverse engineering. Super simple. Okay, so first of all, um, let's say that your goal is to make $10,000 per month, right? As it probably is. Okay, so let's just put that in. Excuse the um, questionable and inconsistent noughts, but let's say the goal is to make 10 grand a month, okay? So what we need to do is we basically need to work our way backwards from this goal in order to suss out like exactly what input is required. So this, my friend, is what we would call in systems thinking, this is an output, okay? An output. And every output has an input. Now, another way to look at this, instead of calling it an output, is to call it an effect. And in the same way that every output has an input, every effect has a cause. Cause and effect governs the, the entire natural world. For example, if I punch you in the face, your face is probably going to hurt. And maybe the effect of me punching you in the face is you punch me in the face, right? So, <clears throat> effect causes create effects and effects create effects, if that makes sense. Like, the effect becomes a cause. So, sorry for another day. So... Now we have to figure out what does this mean? So how, what's the what's the vehicle of value used to generate cash for a business, right? Well, obviously it's gonna be clients, okay? And we need to learn to think in systems. And so the next step of this system is clients, okay? And so let's say that, I don't know, let's just use the simple argument that each client is worth a thousand dollars a month to you. But let's say each, each client is worth a thousand dollars a month. This is simple stuff, right? You should be following at this point. Which, you know, as I'm pretty sure you can understand, you, I'm pretty sure you realize now that you're gonna need like 10, 10 clients to do that, right? So you need 10 clients at the grand a month. Now, once again, this is an output. That's where it gets interesting, okay? But here's the thing. The client is the input for the original output. Starting to understand, right? So output, $10,000 a month. What's the input for $10,000 a month? Well, it's clients, right? But clients are an output as well as an input. And so we can work our way further down the line. In order to have this, we need, um, in order to have clients, we need conversions. Th this is where it starts to get interesting, okay? Conversions are obviously defined as sales, right? Actually closing someone or converting someone in order to get them to become a client, if that makes sense. A client is someone who pays you money. A conversion is essentially the process of doing that. And so what we can realize is that if we need 10 clients, right, um, you're gonna to start to define rates in your business. Okay, so percentage um, rates, just like a conversion rate. You should know what a conversion rate is. If you don't, God help you, right? So this, the conversion um, rate for sales calls is solely dependent upon how good you are at sales, right? That's really what it comes down to. I'm going to assume you're not that great, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just assume that your conversion rate is 10%. Now yours might be less, it might be more, but we're gonna keep the numbers simple so you can reverse engineer this yourself. What does this mean, right? Well, what it means is if our conversion rate is 10% and we need 10 clients, then what we need to do is we need to ask ourselves, 10 is 10% of what number? So we can do this. So we need to have 100 sales calls. So what I'm actually gonna do is change this word from conversions to sales calls. 
because otherwise it gets a bit complicated. And if our conversion rate is 10%, then we need 100. Oh, guys, this is simple stuff, right? You should be following, but trust me, it's going to become very clear as to what you need to do in a second. So you need to do 100 calls, right, to get your 10 clients so you can get your 10K a month if your conversion rate is 10%. Now, obviously, if your conversion rate is 20%, you only need 50 calls. And so what you start to understand is that your business is restrained and bottlenecked by your skill. <laughs> because when it comes to client acquisition, typically like sales, the fundamental constraint of the business is the conversion rate in, in some instances. And the fundamental constriction of the cons uh, conversion rate comes down to your ability to close, right? So you always are the problem. There's no such thing as a sales problem. It's just a skill issue, <laughs> right? Quite literally. So then we need to ask ourselves, okay, well, in order to get calls right, calls conducted, right, we need to have shows. This is this where it gets interesting. So this would be calls conducted, right? How many calls have we actually like conducted? Now we need to get people to actually show up for calls. So let's say that our conversion rate at the show level is 50%. What this means, right, is we then, we can look at this once again from an input output status. The input for getting clients is sales calls. And then the input for getting sales calls conducted is sales calls showing up. And so what this means, if our show rate is 50%, if we only have half of the people who book a call actually showing up, then we need to actually have um, 200 calls booked, right? I'm hoping this is gonna start to make sense here, okay? Because reverse engineering like this, if you don't have the full picture, it can get a bit complicated, but as I, as I build it out, I promise it'll make more sense. The next thing is we obviously need to actually book appointments. And as we've established is we need to book 200 calls. So what this means, in essence, right, if we look at these conversion rates and stuff, we'll get, in order to get, right, here's how it works. In order to get money, we need clients. In order to get clients, we need to conduct sales calls. In order to conduct sales calls, we need to get shows, people to actually show up. And in order to get shows, we actually need people to book calls in the first place, right? And so the way this works, if you reverse engineer the math backwards, is to get to $10,000 a month, if you have a 10% sales conversion rate, a thousand dollar a month price and a 50% show rate, you need to book 200 calls. If your um, conversion rate is 20% and your show rate is 75%, then you need to book less calls. If your conversion rate is 5% and your show rate is 30%, you need to book way more, right? But um, by using this little framework, you should be able to suss out what you can do. Now, the key to this is pessimism. So it helps to assume that your conversion rates at every step of the way are probably 25% worse than the objective actual rate, if that makes sense. Because when I, when I see people do reverse engineering and shit like this, they become, they get way too like um, optimistic and they, everyone thinks, <laughs> everyone thinks they're God's gift to sales. So if you're, if you're doing this in your head and you're thinking, yeah, I can convert like 30%, how many fucking sales calls have you done? Hmm? Oh, I've done three calls and I closed one. This doesn't, dated like the average, Averages do not present themselves in small data sets, my friend. So assume you're terrible at closing, assume hardly anyone's gonna show up and you will never be disappointed. But we can take this a layer deeper. In order to book calls, this is where it gets interesting, right? We need to do outreach. This is where we can get super clear on what we need to do. So I want you to assume for a second that we have a, what we call 1% ABR. So ABR is your, keystone metric for client acquisition. It stands for appointment booking rate, okay? Super simple. So if you have a 1% appointment booking rate, right? It means every time you do 100 outreaches, you book an appointment. Whether that's DMs, cold calling, cold messaging, whatever, right? 1% ABR. So what we can actually do now is we can get super clear on exactly how much work we need to do to book these 200 calls. So it's as simple as asking ourselves, like, so a 1% ABR, by the way, like with our clients, we have an easy grow. People have ABRs of 2% to 7%, 3%, 6%. But 1%, if, if you have no idea what you're doing and you're not very good at cold calling or cold emailing, you wanna aim for a 1% ABR, right? Anything less than that is you're probably doing the wrong thing. Once again, we're keeping it simple. Your ABR might be 0.5% regardless. You have an outreach method. And let's say this has a 1% appointment booking rate. And don't tell me you have a 3% appointment booking rate. Don't tell me you have a 5% appointment. Just because you sent some cold emails and got a couple of meetings, like just assume you have a really low ABR because then you can never go wrong. It's like, um, it's like James Stockdale said, and he said, the optimists die first. It's called the Stockdale paradox. 
it, people think like in in business and stuff they think that optimism and wishful thinking and positive thinking is the right way to win no my friend pessimists win because the more pessimistic you are about your goals now you want to be optimistic about your goal of you know achieving something but very pessimistic about how hard it's going to be for you to achieve it because then your expectations are more aligned with reality and you're less likely to quit so 1% ABR. So what we then need to do is we need to ask ourselves 200, so we need 200 sales calls, right? We need to book 200 calls so that we can actually conduct 100 of them with a 50% show rate and close 10. Because we know we're not great at sales, we know the show rate might not be perfect, right? So we need, we need 200 calls. So we ask ourselves, well, 200 is 1% of what? It should be 20,000. What this means, right, is now that we've, th- first principle, reverse engineered, whatever fucking word you want to use, like in order, right? We've got very clear instructions now. For you to make 10K a month and to build a 10K a month business, this is assuming that you retain your clients, right? In order for you to make 10K a month, you need to send 20,000 cold outreaches. Now, if you've got a 2% ABR, right? then obviously you can basically, you're gonna to have to do like 10,000. If you've got a 0.5% ABR, you're gonna to have to do way more, right? But I need you to start thinking like this because you are now a business owner, which means you have to think in systems, processes, and throughput. Let's think about this for a second. So you need to do 20,000 outreaches so you can book 200 calls, so you can conduct 100 and close 10. Are you with me? Is that starting to make sense? This is how you get super clear on what you need to do. Everyone thinks that getting to 10K a month is about like, yeah, it's like, oh, like I've got to reshape my belief system, which, you know, to be fair, you kind of have to, but you do that more through work than anything else. But people think that 10K a month is this fucking like super complicated like thing. And it's not, it's literally just an, it's like $10,000 a month is an output. It is an effect, as is everything else in the universe that ever happens. And so we need to ask ourselves and think critically about what the cause is of that effect. Because as a human being, you have the ability to quite literally mold reality in conjunction with your desires and goals and what you want the future to look like. And if you want to mold that reality and shift it so that it moves in your favor, which is what we're doing when we set goals, you need to define the exact cause. So now we've isolated the cause using conversion rates and a little bit of Socratic reasoning we've been able to define the exact cause of what you need to do with those conversion rates at that price, assuming you retain your clients to achieve results. And what you'll notice here is it's not building a website. It's not building a logo. It's not doing anything fancy. You're not, there's nothing crazy. You just, you just need to do 20,000 cold calls. So the only thing that stands in, assuming this is true, these numbers apply to you and stuff, you know, assuming that this is true, and these conversion rates are accurate, we're a little bit pessimistic, the only thing that stands in the way between you and $10,000 a month is 20,000 cold outreaches. There's obviously gonna be some more variables. You've gotta learn service delivery. Maybe you've gotta learn how to do some sales stuff. But at its core, first principle, 20K. Let's think about this. So let's say that you want a time frame. Like, okay, well, when should I, how long should it take me to get to this point? Well. Let's say that you're working five days a week, right? Because you're a wagey in your week, right? Let's think about this. So let's say that you have, let's say, how long does it take you to do one outreach? You should be able to to do, you know, 100 dials an hour, but let's be pessimistic with this, right? Let's say it takes you 100, every 100 dials takes you two hours of work. So 100 dials, two hours. Now, by the way, if you're wondering, Charlie, what method should I use to do this 20,000? It's kind of going to be a little bit niche dependent. I would suggest cold calling because what happens with people that sit behind keyboards and hide behind LinkedIn is when they're new to SMMA, they hide behind these platforms and then they book calls, but they're too fucking terrified of the sales call because they have, like cold calling weathers you and it turns you into a good salesperson. It creates verbal dexterity, it creates thick skin, it creates a resistance to any sort of fear of rejection. It makes you think on your feet. It makes you, just makes you a better salesperson. It gives you practice, right? It's like a sound, like making cold calls is like a sandbox for discovery calls. And so if all you do is sit behind your keyboard and type things and then send emails and then have a virtual assistant send looms for you, when it comes around to the sales call, you're terrified and you can't close because you've got no practice, right? Like, so I do cold calling. So 100 dials every two hours, right? So let's say that you're gonna dedicate four hours of work per day, 
specifically to this because once again, you're weak and you only wanna do four hours of cold calling, right? But let's say that's true, which means every day you're doing 200 dials. So it's very simple. All we're gonna do is we're gonna do 20,000 divided by 200. Oh, and lo and behold, what do we get as a result of Charlie's incredible mathematical brain? 100 days. Now, let's then say that you're only working five days a week, because as we know, you are fundamentally weak. Sorry, I don't mean to keep calling you weak, but like, I'm just sick of people saying they wanna make money and then like, they can't fucking pick up the phone. Like, it, it really makes me angry. Ang angry is an exaggeration, not much makes me angry. Makes me just disappointed, man. People say they want success and they say they wanna build a better life for themselves and their family. And then you tell them to do 20,000 cold calls and they say, oh, I can't be bothered. Ah, uh, fine. Oh, it's gonna be hard? What do you mean it's gonna be hard? Oh, I just, I just, dude, I just want like an automation. I just wanna be able to like use Lemlist and like, and then like, you know, just have them come to me. And I don't really wanna do sales calls, so I'm just gonna like, you know, send them like a proposal. Fuck off, pussy. It's supposed to be hard, man. Like that number, 20,000, you're supposed to look at that and think, oh, really? Fucking hell, that's gonna be a lot. Of yeah, fine, accept it. Don't be a. I'm not gonna, I was gonna say the C word, but it's just, I'm just sick of it, man. Like, weak people, like, having these stupid expectations of what business should be. Mate, it doesn't matter what you want. It doesn't matter how you want to build your business. It doesn't matter, your emotional state is nothing to the market. When you're making every decision in your business and how you should, you change yourself in accordance to the market because boy, oh boy, the market will not change for you. But let's say that, you know, we've got 100 days of cold calling to do. You're working five days a week, which means essentially it's going to take you 20 weeks. That's it, man. All you have to do is sit down for four hours a day. Bear in mind, I've been pessimistic this whole way through. So it's not even going to take that long. But if you sit down for four hours a day and you sit there and you make 200 cold calls with a 1% appointment booking rate, you'll book two appointments a day. One of them will show up. And then once every 10 days, you'll close a client. It's boring. It's not shiny, it's not flashy, but that's how business is done. And that's how businesses are built, with honest, hard work. Without shiny objects, without fancy softwares, without 997 courses, without anything. Except from you, a mobile phone, and four hours of fucking work every day. That's all it takes. I always say building an agency or a coaching business is not easy. It's very hard, but it's also very simple. People need to know this. <laughs> This is it, there's <laughs> nothing else to it, man. Like people, there's 10 grand a month thing because like people just assume that, you know, because the, the 10K a month thing would solve all their problems and would change their life and would be amazing. They assume that it's difficult or complicated to achieve. It really isn't, it's not. Like people are like, oh, 10 grand a month. Like, Dude, that would change my life. And like, oh, Oh, I'd be I'd be like a top one percent man. So people just assume that because it's like because it, it it gives you so much that it requires so much. It doesn't really, mate. It's fucking easy. If you are an able-bodied human with time on your hands, there is no fucking reason as to why you should be making anything less than six figures. Truthfully, man. True. I like it's it's if you sure it's easy for me to say. I've been in business for seven years. I haven't made less than I I've made less than seven figures for the last like four or five years now. So you know it's it's for me it's like I'm like oh it's just it's just, and I get from your perspective obviously you're new you need paradigm needs correcting and stuff. But don't be weak, mate. Just fucking do this. Just reverse engineer it. You're bad at sales because you've never done sales calls before. Your show rate's going to be pretty shite because you're doing cold calls. Your appointment booking rate is not going to be great because you've never done it before. So all you need to do is just be pessimistic. And dude, like let's say for example that you know your conversion rate was five percent, right? And even worse. And then you needed four hundred calls. And then you need to do um for forty thousand dials, and it takes two hundred days instead. So what? Well, it doesn't matter if it takes three hundred days. Like to build a ten k a month business, man. Like it takes most doctors like eight years of training and then like five years of careering before they can get there. Everything you want is on the other side of a, basically a year of pain. Just waking up and then suffering on your own accord. That's really all there is to it. If you critically think it through, like everything you want in business, everything you want health-wise, everything you want relationship-wise, everything you want personally, everything you want is on the other side of a year or two of pain. Daily suffering. So suffer well. And there's a quote from Epictetus. I must die, but must I die bawling? Fucking badass quote that, mate. And what it means is 
you've got to suffer, so you might as well just get on with it and <laughs> not complain. I always think this, man, when I'm 25, right? So 100 years ago, guys our age, like I'm assuming you're like a young dude, guys our age had to go to fucking war, mate. We had to carry bayonets and grenades and eat shit food and, and get trench fur and be freezing cold and be shot at and shelled and bombed and told to charge at an enemy line when we be, it's just people are weak as hell these days man oh I don't want to make cold calls I'm afraid of rejection people fucking died a hundred years ago Christ man get grip <laughs> like fuck it out like people do people there are children in the world born with HIV in parts of Africa it's awful awful imagine that you're fucking born that's that stress you give birth to your child and it comes out of HIV or, you know, you, 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 you forget to put the mosquito net up in your child's bedroom and they get malaria. You're telling me 100 cold calls a day is hard? Fuck off. <laughs> Seriously, man. Like, get a fucking grip. We are too weak in the West. We are too fucking weak. We are too soft. And I'm, I'm, I'm preaching this to myself, man, just as much as I am to you. Don't want to have a go at you. I don't want this to come across as a rant. But, like, I feel like everyone needs someone in their life to just tell them this shit. Hundred years ago, people fucking dude. Hundred years ago, you get like a fever or something, you're dead. If you, if hundred years ago, if you didn't have any money, you, you fucking die, mate. Nowadays, you can get like support and shit. Oh, like I don't want to do two, like two hundred cold calls a day, man. That's so much work. And I'm afraid of rejection. People died. People die. Well, there's way worse things that can happen to you than having to do two hundred cold calls a day. So I'll leave you with that. If you want more clients, click the first thing in the description. Don't care if you click it, but if you do, it'll get you more clients. And I do love you. This is a tough message, but I, I really want it to be like a, a good one. I, I, I'm just, I'm pissed. Because <laughs> people are lying to you and they overcomplicate it. And um, I hope this message finds you well. Subscribe if you're new. If you're watching and you haven't subscribed yet, come on, mate. Just give it that bang. Tap that little button. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.